Shalom. Welcome to 6x6. Six, six minutes at five, six days of the week, and you get a full idea from Lubavitch Rebbe. And recap very, very briefly, we're talking about Korach's rebellion, and therefore that they were uh, rebelled against the Almighty's choice of Moses being the leader and our own Aaron to be the Kohen, the high priest. So therefore, they got a fitting punishment. But why is there the fitting punishment? And that's what we're going to discuss now, because we have to remember that everything is meter connected, meter measure for measure. What you do is what you get. And that's in a good way, and it's also in a bad way also. The punishment has to fit the crime. Again, as I compare and contrast secular law to... to uh, the Torah law, in secular law, someone robs something, so they put him in a cage, and I do do prison work, and I can tell you firsthand what it looks like for a good few years. Well, why is that a punishment? We talked about another time where Torah has a totally different take on it. Put the person to work and let him pay back to society and to the people he has harmed. On the other hand, Torah is a more just idea, having them work them off. All right, that's one example. But that's why I'm saying the punishment has to fit the crime. Maybe not in the world, but surely in Torah way also. So Korach had a double punishment. Not only was he buried, but he was burned. And the 250 people that he uh, seduced into doing the wrong thing, they are the only ones that got burned. So why is that a fitting punishment? Well, on one hand, they wanted to lift themselves up. As we said, they wanted to be a Kohen, to be a higher status. And a person has to know that every person is important no matter who they are and what they are. You could say, well, the foot wants to be the brain. Hey, man, you get to think. That's, ooh, people say you're so smart. What's a bunch of feet? They just walk around. Well, the head's not going to go anywhere without the feet. So even though it may look like a nicer job, everybody, no matter who they are and what they are, are needed for, who, for what they are doing. And no one's worse than the other. What would be a person without their feet? God forbid. That would be terrible. So every person is important. But again, you can't just go around being jealous. Hey, a foot, I want to be the hand. I want to be the brain. You have to know who you are and what you are and be glad in that you have a, a good job that in a fitting position in the world. Well, Korach didn't have that recognition and that he was also a levy himself. So he wasn't just some kind of poor person. He was, First of all, he was rich and he did have status, but he wanted more. And there's a lot of times the trouble with a lot of people, of course, is that if you look at them and they say, well, they got a good life and they have the means and they have status, but they're jealous, they're, they're raging and jealous. They want to be bigger, they want to be better, and that is their downfall. And it's exactly what happened with Korach, that Korach wanted to be elevated to a status of being a Kohen Gadol, the high priest, even though he was a lady, but he wanted to go and do even more. Well, instead of being a high priest, meaning getting to an elevated status, what was his finishing fitting punishment? It was to be brought down into the earth, being swallowed up by the earth. I mean, he saw the biggest ascent. Usually we're walking on the earth. We don't live in the dirt. So obviously, then instead of being higher elevated, he became lower. He became uh, into the pit. And that's an important idea that we're talking about. Everything fits the punishment in Torah, at least, fits the crime of what a person has to do. And the idea of being burned, so to speak, that what is the idea of burning? When you burn something, things go up to their source. That, again, the water, nothing is destroyed, and that's the perfect example of Albert Einstein's theorem, that nothing, maybe it changes from matter to energy, energy to matter, whatever that you could do, you could change things around, but you don't destroy anything. So therefore, even if you burn, it's a well, there's nothing left. 
over here after you burnt something to a crisp. First of all, there's the ashes there. And number two, that maybe it changes into some other chemical reaction. Nothing's ever destroyed. So that's an idea of being burnt also by these 250 people, that they want to know that they wanted to be burnt up to the Almighty to, to carry out what Hashem wants, the Almighty wants, but it's turned they're burnt up and they turned and they had a different status in life and therefore that they were changed just like a burnt thing. Like I said, that it's not destroyed, but it's just in case their status of what they are and their chemicals, whatever have you, is destroyed and it's a whole different uh, situation for its own right. So in any case, we're going to continue this idea in part three about Korok's rebellion and how how it actually ultimately fits to our service also. Thank God we're not rebelling against the Almighty, but how does it apply to us also? Stay tuned.